public exposure, we're starting something new tonight. We are investigating the foreclosure crisis, and it doesn't take much to know that there are some really difficult things that are happening out there with our economy. In fact, it's so much all throughout the nation you see help foreclosure on the sides of houses, just like this uh, graphic that we're going to put up. I'm Stan Emmer. We have an, uh, a guest tonight who is right in the middle of all of this in terms of helping debtors out. But first, there's something big on the federal horizon, and that is that the U.S., uh, this is out of the New York Times, September 6th, the U.S. takes a hard line in suits over bad mortgages. The United States government, the Federal Housing Finance Agency, has filed suit against 17 great, big, huge, massive banks. You know almost all of them, and we're going to be going over that, uh, you know, some of the basis of that lawsuit in uh, very specifics. But first, let's get to our guest, Edgar Hall, attorney. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So as an attorney, what, uh, what do you oftentimes do? Well, in foreclosure situations, um, I tend to deal with the individual as opposed to the, the larger scale items. So when a client comes in, they're facing foreclosure, I take a look where they are in the process. I make a legal strategy. Uh, sometimes that involves bankruptcy, sometimes strategic default, you know, sometimes just state court action to restrain the sale. Hmm. And it sounds like a really responsible type of practice that you have because you have to really get into the responsibility side that they have, they being the debtors have too. But responsibility is where you came from, right? We've got some great pictures here of Edgar when he was just a little bit younger, maybe just a couple of, uh, a couple of months ago, huh? Well, maybe a little <laughs> longer than that, when uh, he was in the United States uh, Air Force. And you were a sergeant, and what was your job there? I repaired medical equipment, uh, so I was in the medical group, and I did both active duty and reserves. I deployed after 9 11 uh, to Ramstein Air Base and did some work there. I came back, finished up my tour, and went to law school. Okay, there's so much to, to get into on this. Let's, let's get right into it. Uh, we talked about the big lawsuit that the uh, FHFA filed, and so this segment is how to communicate with your mortgage servicer. Uh, interestingly enough, in the case of this lawsuit, and uh, let's go ahead and get the, the complaint up, and let's also go ahead then and show some of the defendants, because it's amazing to me that what is this basically, what's this lawsuit about? This lawsuit's about, right now when you look at the foreclosure crisis, you have so many houses in default, so many individual problems, it, it's just killing the market. This lawsuit's a chance to try to bring stability to this, and so you you sue for the fraud or whatever the problems are going on, mm -hmm. and then you bring closure to it, and then that way they can help stabilize. I have not read everything in the complaint. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's pretty complex and definitely outside of my scope. I'm not a prosecutor. Um, however, it, I'm very excited to see what's going to happen with this. It's yeah. a step in the right direction. You sue for the fraud, and when I hear that word fraud and then I look at these defendants, I mean, you know, I see, I see funny advertisements from many of these defendants every single day, and these are household names. Okay, so how do you communicate with the servicer of your mortgage? Uh, through a lawyer is always the best method, uh, just because they tend to listen when they see that letterhead or when they hear that Esquire for the name of the person calling. But there are some other ways that a, a homeowner uh, can communicate. One is through some legal processes already available, such as uh, Truth in Lending Act request or mm -hmm. uh, requests under Real Estate Settlement Procedure Act, commonly known as RESPA or a QWR letter. Uh, yeah, okay, well, let, let's back up just a little bit. Truth in the Lending Act. Now, mm -hmm. that, that sounds like, hey, that's something that's going to protect me, but maybe it doesn't always. Well, the problem is the Truth in Lending Act covers a lot of the initial disclosures when you purchase your property, such as your HUD-1 and some other issues. But what it also allows you to do is look and see who's currently the holder, who's the servicer, some issues like that. And so you can make a request under there, and if they fail to answer you, there are some potential damages can be had. Hmm. Now, what's a QWR letter? Uh, that stands for Qualified Written Response, and what that means is if there's any issues as to who actually owns the note, who actually is the servicer, uh, if there's any issues with the escrow or accounting, you can write a letter and have them answer those questions for you, and they're required to. You mean I, I, I don't just look at my payment book and, you know, that I write my checkout? Oh, I don't do that anymore, though, do I? I, I kind of send it in in another way. I don't do, just do that. Why is it that I need a lawyer to talk to my bank? Well, the problem is a lot of times when you send it in as what they call a pro se litigant, meaning without an attorney, there's a chance you could write the letter incorrectly. There's a chance they may not take you seriously. I mean, they should, but I'm sure there's mistakes that happen. Mm -hmm. uh, and likewise, if you don't get the terms of art right, in terms of art I mean the legal terms, or if you don't state it with the right question, 
if you make it overly broad or under, you know, under inclusive, it can be problematic. One thing that you, um, in preparation for the show, you talked about that people need to do it. It's the net present value test. That's correct. What is that? A net present value is it's a mathematical model that shows that granting a loan mod will yield more benefit than the existing loan that you have. A loan mod is a loan modification Correct. on your you know, on your current mortgage. Correct. And uh, why would a bank do that? I mean, why would they? Yeah, why would they grant? Why would they grant a loan modification? Well, if you've passed the net present value test, you've shown that the the new product, the new loan that you'll be getting, would actually net them more money in the end. It's a chance to basically move arrears or anything to the end of the loan, and then you, in return, as the homeowner, get maybe some reduced principal or interest and a more affordable payment. So it's kind of good for everybody. I want to make sure to get up on the screen the eFannieMae.com website, which talks about the net present value test at the same point in time, and we have a minute left in this segment. Uh, ProPublica, Journalism in the Public Interest, says the secret test that ensures lenders win on loan mods, that's the net present value test. Do lenders win on loan mods? I believe so. Why? Well, for one, they make more on the loan when they do issue it. Uh -huh. um, and then second, it, it keeps the person in the property rather than having to go through eviction, possibly loss of, uh, you know, uh, mortgage values during that time, et cetera. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just good for everybody. In 10 seconds or less, can a lender or can borrowers ever win on loan mods? Occasionally. Occasionally. All right, with that, we're going to be coming back uh, with another segment about the foreclosure crisis as public exposure investigates the foreclosure crisis with Edgar Hall, attorney.